You know the vibes, we're back with another video, and today we are going to be... Bro, what kind of video is this? It's a reaction. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> they don't do these no more. <laughs> Alright, what the heck? It's a UFC one, too. Well, I mean, there's kind of a reason why we're doing the UFC videos. Tell them why we're doing the UFC Okay, I'll tell you why we're doing the <laughs> UFC video. <laughs> it's like, oh, boom, UFC 4, I got a walkthrough coming through, create my own fighter, my career, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's like, trash. I'm not trash. And today we are going to be reacting to 10 fights where everyone lost. <laughs> Even though someone technically won. I'm pretty sure what expired this video was, um, dude. I forgot his name. Peter Young? Yeah. 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 And Flat He got a hard name. He don't have a black right. name. Right. I forgot his like nickname though. Whatever. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow the IG. D.N.A. Underscore pride. It's a, it's yeah. a, something cool. Feel the vibes. Yeah. Name that. It's Sterling, right? Sterling. Something yeah. Sterling. Yeah. Elijah and Sterling. Yeah. Let's get straight into the video. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Feel the vibes. Go straight. I did it. Both vibes on the way. Got some singles. <laughs> We got a single on the <laughs> way, boy. Yeah, okay. okay. Wow. <coughs> God dang it. Yeah. Oh, you might as well delete that video. <laughs> Actually, whatever. I'll just put Dominic Toretto once said it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. But that's not always the case in mixed martial arts. Today we're going to take a look at that rare occasion where everybody loses <laughs> even though a winner is announced. I'm not talking about no contests or a situation oh, like poor Chaz Skelly at 1985 having bout canceling back yeah, spasms right before oh, yeah. his walkout huh. against Jamal Emmers, although that was awful for both parties. This list is all about freakish and rare situations that left both the bout's official winner and loser leaving the cage on a completely sour note. Most, winning uh, isn't always like winning, no matter what Vin Diesel says. Or, uh, I'm Tommy from MMA on point, uh, and these Anthony are ten fights where everybody lost to you know somebody <laughs> won. Right, bro, get off of me. <laughs> Number 10, Max Holloway versus Charles Oliveira. I mean, Wouldn't you just fall. love to see Max Holloway take on Charles Oliveira right now? They're both white hot. It would be one of the biggest and best matchups you could make in the smaller weight classes. Well, guess what? It already happened in 2015, and you don't remember it because nobody left that cage feeling like a damn thing had even happened that warranted a win or a loss on the record, and yet it was so. This top 10 featherweight bout main event at UFC Fight Night 74. Holloway was six wins into his post-McGregor streak. Oliveira had bounced back from a two-fight skid, to score four straight wins with four performance bonuses. This Dang. fight was going to be awesome. Get your popcorn ready. The atmosphere in Saskatoon was electric. That has to be a sentence that's never been used before. That was uncalled for. The bout got started with some feeling out. Nothing too big landing yet for anybody. About 90 seconds in, Oliveira shoots on a takedown and doesn't get it. These things happen, but immediately after, he stands back up and begins to hold his shoulder area and then lays on the mat. Herb Dean rightfully assumes something is up and jumps in. Everybody is confused. Uh, what was assumed to be a collarbone Cobo? injury or something turned out to be a tear in Charlie Olive's esophagus. How the fuck did you manage that? Now, he would be okay, but the bout was a total wash despite the TKO victory given to Max. Hopefully, these two get to run it back and have a real fight someday. Wow. Number 9, Robbie Lawler versus Ben Askren. It was one of the most highly I'm anticipated dead. promotional debuts in yeah, history. Like, After nearly a decade unbeaten elsewhere, the best welterweight like, in the world like outside the UFC like, like would finally be competing in the octagon. Oh, yeah, After yeah, mountains and mountains of shit talk and speculation by fans God, about how it is out. he would fare, Ben Askren's first test like, would be a doozy we'll too. Back up. Always dangerous former title <laughs> really holder quick. Robbie Lawler. This three-minute bout was insanity. Within the first 30 seconds, Askren had been dumped on his head and looked to be finished on the ground, but somehow recovered. Now, while some fans felt there could have been a stoppage there. The real controversy would come just a bit later, when after Ben recovered and was grappling Robbie against the cage, a bulldog choke was applied. It was certainly tight, and as we've seen, Askren can crush a couple watermelons in his grip, but it appeared Robbie wasn't out quite yet. When an arm went suspiciously limp though, Herb Dean had seen enough, prompting a furious Robbie Lawler to immediately stand up in protest. Once they out momentarily yeah, and came you back know that's to, was a bad man. call by Herb Dean, Never the MMA the community was split, and as a result, Robbie was potentially robbed of a chance to escape and maybe win the bout, and Ben didn't get that off. definitive win in his <laughs> debut that would have boosted his already hyped status even more. The weird finish left too many questions, and both fighters suffered because of it. Number 8, Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou. 
What happens when two of the heaviest hitters in mixed martial arts history are locked in a cage together and forced to throw their murderous hands? One of the worst fights of all time, as it turns out. Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou at UFC 226 will forever be one of MMA's biggest flops. In total, 31 significant strikes were landed during a three-round affair, and I use the word significant loosely there. That's an average of just two strikes a minute to give you some perspective on how uneventful this clash of heavyweight titans turned out to be. What the hell happened? These two had a combined 15 UFC wins with 14 finishes prior to the bout. Well, Ngannou was coming off his first career loss in that high-profile title fight with Stipe Miocic at UFC 220 and admitted that he was scared in the cage as a result of that failure. Basically, he froze up. As for Lewis, an ongoing back injury left him nearly entirely immobile for the length of the fight. It was the perfect storm of issues that would turn one of the most highly anticipated slugfests right, ever like, into an all-time disappointment. Lewis would get win, win, but said after that it felt like he lost. Ngannou was thrown under the bus for the debacle by Dana White. I think his ego ran away with him, big time. I can tell you that his ego absolutely didn't run away with him. Luckily, they've since recovered from this disaster, and hopefully, if and when they meet again, we get the fireworks we were all expecting. Number seven, Gegar Masasi versus Chris Weidman. The kneeing of a downed opponent can cause all sorts of problems, especially when each commission now apparently has their own interpretation of what being downed even means. If we're in New York and you have a pinky touching, can I knee you in the skull? It depends on what year it is. In 2017, both hands were required to be on the mat to constitute a downed opponent, either with the palms flat or with the fists. Chris Weidman and Gegard Masasi were fighting in New York in 2017 at UFC 210. Masasi had impressively won six of his last seven going into the fight, and former champion Weidman, he was struggling. He'd lost two in a row, including his title, so he needed a rebound uh, here. Yeah. And leading up to the incident that made this an entry on Such our list, Weidman was picture. most definitely winning the fight, scoring multiple takedowns and getting the better of the ground battle. However, during an exchange in the second round, Chris was kneed twice in the head as his hands dangled in and out of the range of the mat. Dan Mergliata stopped the action, calling the blows illegal. However, neither of them were illegal. Oops! Upon replay, Big John let Big Oops. Dan know there was no foul, but by that point, Weidman had already told the doctors it was February when it was April. Chris, upon learning the knee was legal, was suddenly of sound mind again, but the fight had been stopped and the doctors weren't buying it. <laughs> Truthfully, these knees weren't that devastating. The fight definitely should have gone on had Mergliata not stopped the action. And so in the end, Weidman <laughs> loses their bout in a row because of this weird-ass situation, and Masasi's victory doesn't look legit. Everybody goes home sad. Number six, Demetrius Johnson versus Ian McCall. It's perhaps the stupidest situation on our list, and a reminder that judges are about as dependable as airplane Wi-Fi. Future champ Demetrius Johnson and Ian McCall were duking it out in the semifinal of the UFC Flyweight Tournament at UFC on FX2, which at its conclusion would crown the first ever champion in the newly minted division. To ensure a winner, the UFC would force a sudden victory round in the event of a draw during any tournament bouts. You know I wouldn't be mentioning that stipulation if it didn't have something to do with what happened. DJ took the first two rounds of the fight, but saw himself getting smashed in the third. You could argue a 10-8 round, as well as a stoppage at one point. Uncle Creepy really had Mighty Mouse on the ropes. Johnson survived, though, and so it would go to the judges' scorecards, revealing a majority decision victory for DJ. Tommy, you just said the sudden victory stipulation would have something to do with this. Why did you lie to me? I didn't lie to you, because as it turns out, somebody added up the scorecards wrong, and so at the post-fight press conference, Dana White revealed that the bout was actually a majority draw, meaning it was was supposed to go into a fourth sudden death round, oh, a round starting after a significant beating by McCall. Instead, the two would be forced to rematch a few months later, and Johnson would get the UD. Everybody got screwed here. DJ's victory was taken away, Ian should have got his fourth you. round, the tournament got held up, and all because somebody couldn't count yeah. to 30. Mad, 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 mad. Number five, Jail Sonnen fire. versus Paulo Rodeo <laughs> 2. Yelling out in pain yeah, constitutes yeah, a verbal yeah. tap in mixed martial arts. Movie's pretty good. And okay. even though referee okay. Josh Rosenthal correctly called a stop to the bout between Chael Sonnen and Paulo Filio for the WBC middleweight oh, title due to an armbar, Sonnen used the fact that he had not physically tapped to argue the win's legitimacy, and so a rematch was scheduled initially for WBC 33. But Filio was forced into drug rehab, a sign of problems to come. After a win over Brian Baker, the bout was scheduled a second time at WBC 36. There were issues before the fight even started, with Paulo missing weight by seven pounds, making Sonnen 
Jackson's second attempt at defeating someone who at the time was considered by many in the media the second best middleweight in the world behind Anderson Silva, a non-title bout. Sonnen would easily win this time, scoring 30-27s on all three judges' scorecards, but the prestige of the win was robbed from him as the struggling Filio was having a breakdown mid-fight, talking to people who weren't there and other bizarre behavior. Fans weren't into the lackluster fight either, and even though Chael won, oh, everything no, felt tainted. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Yeah. Apollo, whatever he would have gained from What's being up, James? What's up, James? champion, evaporated alongside Filio's <laughs> career. The Brazilian <laughs> promised Who is James? <laughs> <laughs> but nobody came out of this one feeling good about what went down. Number four, Chris Weidman versus Anderson Silva two. When unbeaten middleweight standout Chris Weidman oh, no. marched down to the Octagon at UFC 162, right, draped in old glory to the tune of Tom Brady and Heartbreak I right. Won't Back Down, nobody was expecting much. After all, this was a bout against Anderson Silva, the reigning defending greatest of all time 185-er. This kid with nine pro bouts wasn't about to dethrone him. Then a minute 18 into the second, he made history by KOing the Spider and taking his title. A rematch was set up for later that year, given Silva's wild. title history and, well, the circumstances. See, Weidman won fair and square, but the way Silva clowned around, and because of Chris's unknown status, fans thought it maybe was a fluke. UFC 168 would be his chance to prove them wrong, and things were going great. Weidman won the first round and even hurt Anderson, but the champ could be a slow starter, and round two was coming up. At nearly the exact moment the first fight ended, Silva horrifyingly broke his leg on a checked kick by Weidman, ending the fight in shocking fashion. The TKO felt bittersweet. Weidman didn't get a chance to put a normal end to his opponent, and so those wrong. who felt it was a fluke so, the first time might have still been yeah, inclined. Uh, and for yeah. Silva, a long road to recovery was ahead, and he would never reach the title picture again. I have no doubt this <laughs> like, was not bro, how so, fighter won so bad. Tonight. Number three, I was like toying with you. Sterling. How the Ripped from the you say that? It's the I kind of had it, not really, but not I knew it was like. What do I even need to say? Well, let's talk about what constitutes a downed opponent again. If a single knee is on the mat, your hands could be raising the roof if you wanted, and it would still be considered illegal to knee you in the face. In the fourth round of their bantamweight title fight at UFC 259, the champion was right. getting the better of Aljamain Sterling. He was up officially two rounds on two of the judges' scorecards. Yeah. That wasn't no, no, Yana. Absolutely yeah. blasted Alja with a knee when he was most definitely grounded. The fight was stopped. The fight was called when Sterling <laughs> couldn't continue. Fancy Bray did such a to bad slip job faking it. Oh, Aljo's been. face. It was definitely thrown on purpose. Always wanted to be an as a kid. Up in sleep. As soon as he knew, I knew my knee was out. Alja made Sterling. Nobody was out cold. Except to boo. But you can bet this one wouldn't have gone over well with the fans. Ultimately, it was the right call whether you were going to be sure he has the end of Meryl Streep or not. But the outcome was just. Sour all Especially around. if I was not, you know, right. I'm losing right. this fight. <laughs> he about to lose a point, but if I can't continue, they're going to stop the fight. So hey, what? Yeah. And I'm about to get the title. Jermaine Duran yeah. versus Holly Holm. Life can come I wouldn't even fight him fast. again. I wouldn't even fight him again. He's a dirty fighter. He's a dirty fighter. And after her opponent of the night with the Inaugural Women's Featherweight Championship, what fighter is more universally liked than the preacher's daughter and Ronda Holm. Rousey destroyer uh, Holly Holm? She looks like a TikTok girl. Really girl. ugly, really I'm fast, sweet. though. When in their lackluster five rounds back and forth, twice Durandamy would hit home after the horn. The first late blow hurting the former Bantamweight champion badly after the second round. When the third round ended with a similar foul, the crowd was livid and expected points to be taken away. Instead, referee Todd Anderson gave her another verbal warning, which while not technically incorrect as it's left to his discretion, just about everyone in the MMA world expected a deduction. Had one occurred, the fight would have been a draw as Jermaine would win by a single point on all three cards. But that's not what happened, and this was just bad all around. Three to see what happened this being, crazed no. villain and was booed mercilessly. Holm got screwed out of, at the very least, a draw and possibly a world title depending on how she might have performed without getting black illegally. This loser-filled night would have an even shittier footnote when GDR would be stripped of the title 128 days later for refusing to fight for yeah, his cyborg. Fight cyborg. What a clusterfuck. <sighs> Number because, one, like, Vitor Belfort versus Randy Couture 2. Like, you know, an absolute past, bummer like, all around. Randy Couture and steroids. Vitor Belfort were uh, set to compete uh, for the light heavyweight strap in the main event of UFC 46 in though. January of 2004. A rematch of the six years like, previous like, and a heavyweight title eliminator at UFC 15. You can have the belt. You can have the belt. You can have the belt. 
it from Angus <laughs> Tartu to Ortiz the September previous. It was a he big got time it. Bout I'd probably go down because he wouldn't come down. He'd go up. Uh, fast. Nah, I'm good. Less than a minute into the fight, Vitor's glove would inadvertently he, damage like Randy's eye. Yeah, middleweight. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what. It during the early know. action. The resulting damage was too wow. severe, and the doctor called the stop. Yeah, like his glove. Before now, really even got a chance to get going because the injury was caused by a punch and not a foul. The official ruling was a TKO victory for Belfort. The crowd was not happy, as you can imagine, but there's an entirely more awful layer to the situation than the belt changing hands in an unsatisfying way. Three weeks prior to the bout, Vitor's sister Priscilla was kidnapped and murdered. At the time, her fate was unknown, and she was still considered a missing person. Belfort had dedicated the bout to her and donned a t-shirt with her image on it for his understandably emotional post-fight interview. An immediate rematch would take place at UFC 49, where Couture would recapture his title, but nobody left this one feeling good about anything. Wow. Huge shout out to Max Randall that for editing wild. this video together. Follow him on Twitter that at Max tough. underscore Randall. A big, big thank you to Ben Rosette, who provided that sweet tune you heard in the intro. Check out his music by clicking the link in the description and go give him a follow on his Instagram intro. and Twitter page at Ben Rosette. Thanks for watching. So, Please give it? us a that like it? and subscribe. Yeah. That was crazy. It was suck. Uh, eye poke would suck. That's probably the worst. Yeah. That Brad Bro, like that was even like I. That didn't even look like an eye poke. Yeah. Like, he shredded his eye. Uh, I'm good on that. <laughs> yeah, I think I rather. <laughs> Bro, you would have came on the like, Bro, you get beat up. No, no, no. He put me in line. I'm good though. <laughs> but ain't no way he pokes you in your eye. What he do? Oh, he ain't cut his nose. Really? He ain't clip his nose. <laughs> now, what's crazy about that though is like. People keep fighting after that. Yeah. They're like, that eye is completely shut. We're going into the third round. <laughs> <laughs> right? The doctor always comes over and is like, do you want to continue? Like, yeah. Mm -mm. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I can't see. No. Like, tell, like, tell him that, like, I said continue, but just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling it. I'm going to figure something out. He's like, like, you want to continue? Uh uh. He'd be like, we're stopping. I'd be like, <laughs> Actor skills coming back like, out. I'd be like, I'd be like, if I slide you something. Like, like, when, uh, like Sterling was on the ground, I'd be like, ah, if I slide your timber. Ah, ah, boy, I'm, I'm hurt. I mean, he did knee him in the head. I'm not saying yeah. he faked it. I would have faked it, though. <laughs> He's out cold. <laughs> He's out cold. You're not joking, man. Man, I would have been. Wouldn't even care. Uh, but anyway, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow IG. You're not in that in this group, right? Yeah, make sure. Yeah, UFC series is about to drop. Of, oh, eventually. Yeah. I got some videos done. I'm good. The first, bro, ignore the first couple parts, bro. The, I'm so the editing weak. won't that clean. <laughs> I was learning some stuff. But yeah, singles coming out. Wasabi, call that wasabi. Uh, <laughs>